think we're going to give everybody a minute to hop on, but we'll get started very soon. I think we will be a small group today, but it's, I think that's a little bit nicer for what we're doing. So welcome to everyone and we'll start in just a few or in just a minute. Is this an hour or is it 45 minutes? Just 45 minutes. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah, we try to have different, different lengths of programs. Um, so the ones on Fridays are always 45. Yeah, I'm sure we're gonna have some other people joining us, but I hate punishing folks who are here on time. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, so nice to see all of you for another for a very special culture and coffee, um, a little bit different than what we've done in the past. Um, if anybody doesn't know me, I'm Abby King, the Assistant Director of Adult Programs here at PAFA. Um, I wanna start the way I start every program and just for any PAFA members in the audience, thank you. Thank you for continuing to support us and for keeping us PAFA strong, we appreciate you. Um, if you haven't already, you can always consider joining um, and I'll drop a link to the, that in the chat, maybe towards the end of the program. Um, I wanted, we, I'm going to turn things over to my wonderful colleague in just a second. Um, Christina Murray is going to first start by explaining the history behind some mo movement and mobility practices. She has a short PowerPoint to just kind of give us some resources to get started um, and why it's so important to incorporate um, these practices into our everyday lives. So I'm personally so, so excited um, today for the program. Um, I think almost everybody I can see is already kind of get, in a comfy position, but if you haven't already, I'm gonna, I'm sitting on my floor um, on my mat, but feel free to grab a mat, a pillow, comfy chair, um, get comfortable. I think everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and mute anybody that's not muted. I will say for the, the most of the program, if you don't mind staying muted, unless Christina is actively asking us questions, um, we will have time at the end for Q and A and a little bit of a discussion, but just to be respectful, stay muted. Um, we are recording today's program, so if you know anyone who missed, we will be uploading this to Papa's YouTube channel, um, as we do with all our programs. Um, so just note that we are recording. And other than that, I think we're ready to get started. I'm going to hand you over to my colleague, the many, many hat wearing yoga certified Papa Team Programs Coordinator, Christina Murray. Welcome. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, yes, my name is Christina Murray. Um, as Abby said, I do wear a lot of hats, but um, by day at PAFA, um, I'm the teen programs coordinator and I run all of the teen programs that happen in the museum. Um, and by early morning slash night, I'm a yoga teacher. Um, and I completed a 250 hour yoga teaching certification about a year ago, and I've been actively teaching for about six months now. Um, so I am going to be talking us through um, some of the basics of um, mindfulness and meditation, as well as mobility work, why it's so important to incorporate it into um, your everyday life, especially at a time like this when things are so uncertain and you know um, our, our states of anxiety might be a little bit higher, our stress might be elevated. So there's a lot of really simple, um, effective ways to incorporate some of these things into your life to just make it better. So this is gonna be a great introduction um, to a lot, to, for a lot of you. Um, and as Abby said, I'm going to start with a short um, PowerPoint just to break things down. And then we're going to get into some movement practice. Um, you're more than welcome to try any of this with me that you would like. Um, but if you're not comfortable, you're of course welcome to just watch and observe. Um, and I will also be queuing, um, you know, ways that we can make it more accessible for everyone. So I want this to, to be um, very inclusive and, and I want each of you to be able to find a way to, to make this work for you. Okay, so I'm going to start by um, sharing my PowerPoint here.
Okay. Um, also, before I get into this, um, I just want to um, make everyone aware that I am not a doctor. I do not have a bachelor's degree or any other degrees in um, medicine or science. Um, this is a practice that I've been working on for a long time. So I'm, of course, here to, to share my knowledge with you. But if you have um, specific questions around anatomy or how to um, how to bring some of this work into your life um, definitely be sure to, to consult a doctor before before starting movement practices um, so for, uh, without without any more ado um, movement and mindfulness so we're gonna get started um, give me one second here All right, so we're going to get us started with a little bit of a um, description and breakdown of what mindfulness and meditation are, because I think there's a lot of um, misconceptions out in the world about what, what some of this work is. So um, mindfulness is this idea of really um, being aware of what's going on in the present moment and doing so without any judgment. So um, oftentimes mindfulness is kind of... Um, thought of as this idea where you're supposed to empty your mind and have no thoughts and that myth is definitely not true you're really training yourself to be present okay and meditation is the tool that you use to do that so meditation is, re is really about the training of attention that cultivates the mindfulness um, there's many many different ways to meditate um, a very simple one is just sitting on your mat closing your eyes paying attention to your breath, your inhales and your exhales, and just being present and focusing on that. Um, you can do walking meditations, um, mindful eating is a practice that's very popular, repeating mantras or sayings that kind of empower you. Um, these are all examples of, of ways that you can incorporate meditation into your life. Um, so we're, we're going to do a, a quick demonstration a little later of what meditation, of a few meditations that I really like to do that are very simple. Um, but some of the benefits of these practices, it really does lead us to become more aware and to live in the present moment. There are many, many scientific studies that show that this lowers stress, alleviates feelings of anxiety and depression. Um, it definitely promotes calmness, relaxation, greater mental clarity. And when you're able to release all of these things, it also makes space for creativity to happen. So it's a really important practice for, um, for us to get into. Okay. Um, and then in terms of some of the movement practices we're going to do, I'm going to talk about um, breath work, mobility, and yoga asana. So um, breath work is something that's really important to me um, as a practitioner of, of the eight limbs of yoga. Um, breath work is referred to as pranayama in Sanskrit. And this is the conscious awareness and regulation of your breath. So um, one of the most fascinating things that I found in my, in my years of practicing yoga is um, we do not use most of our lung capacity in a given day. So an average human um, has the capacity to breathe in about six liters. We have, we have space for six liters of, of, of air in our lungs. Um, a normal inhale um, an exhale, you're only taking in about half a liter. So really, on average, we're, only, we're using less than 20% of our lung capacity um, in a given day. If you are um, in a state where you're really exerting yourself, you're, you're in um, like a high cardio workout, um, you'll use up to about 70% of your lung capacity. So breath work, um, pranayama work is a great way to really use your full, um, your full lung capacity. It also has a lot of the same um, results as, as, the, mo as the, um, the mindfulness and meditation work. So it lowers stress, um, calms your nervous system, it can, you know, uh, really increase circulation and blood flow, even decrease your heart rate. Um, and there's quite a few studies that have been done in the past about 10 years that really show the effects of both um, yoga asana, so yoga movement, as well as breath work and meditation. Um, another thing that's really important to me um, as, as a yoga practitioner and an instructor is mobility work. So, um, Mobility work is when you move through your full range of motion within a joint or a muscle. Um, these are practices that are really meant to be very low stress on your body. It's a way to open yourself up before you practice other um, forms of movement. They're very simple movements where you're basically just like kind of moving certain joints around in a circle. Um, 
It also tends to break down some of the fascia and the connective tissue that will build up when you're not moving. Um, and also mobility work is, again, really accessible for anyone. So um, when we think about how much we sit um, in our modern era, uh, a lot of doctors, a lot of scientists are kind of talking about how sitting has become the new smoking and it's really important to make sure to get up for at least about five minutes of every hour. So I think that mobility work is a great way to get yourself up and out of your chair and get your body moving and really, um, you know, low stress, easy movements. So we'll be demonst I'll be demonstrating um, some breath work and some mobility work later on. And then I wanted to take a moment to also talk about yoga asana. So um, yoga asana are yoga postures and poses um, that, that we do in yoga that build strength and flexibility. Um, a lot of yoga poses, um, they have Sanskrit names and, and they are meant to, um, give you kind of a goal or an embodiment for, for the posture. So how you should feel when you're in it. So for example, there are postures called, um, warrior postures. So you're meant to kind of feel like a warrior, um, and really feel strong when you're in that posture. So I'll be sure at the end to also demonstrate a few, um, yoga asana postures that, that you can use um in your everyday life um but also when you need to take your your um five minute break every hour after you've been sitting for a while um and just to go over some of the benefits of of some of this work i've mentioned them before but breath work and connecting breath to movement definitely improves your lung capacity um this type of work can calm your nervous system quite a bit um it can decrease your heart rate and your blood pressure um, but there's a lot of studies that are showing that, um, that breath work and movement and yoga practice specifically um, increases the alpha brain waves associated with lower levels of stress. Um, it also really, it's interesting to think about our breath is associated with our respiratory system. And it's one of the few bodily systems that we have some control over, which is really interesting, right? You can't stop and start your heart. You can't control your cardiovascular system, but you do have some control over your breath um, and your respiratory system. So um, just thinking about that, you know, the fact that you can train it, um, that's a really cool idea, right? Um, and then also um, yoga study or studies on yoga and breath work have shown that it's really beneficial for your autonomic nervous system. So that includes your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. It definitely helps to regulate those. And those are the systems that control um, kind of your stress um, cycles as well as your um, relaxation. So there's a lot of kind of balancing that happens in yoga, um, bringing your body back to this state of, um, of balance. Is, is really a big goal of it. Okay. Uh, there's so many different, um, different benefits that I could get into with yoga and breath work. There is one study in specifically that really breaks it all down um, that, that we can definitely share for you. Okay, um, so before we get into some of the movement, I want to just take a moment to talk a, a little bit about the history of mindfulness and meditation and why it's really important to honor the roots of yoga. Okay, so most religions do have some sort of contemplative or mindfulness tradition in them. So when we think about prayer that comes from most um, philosophies um, and, mind, and uh, religious traditions, this is kind of at the root of that. So today, um, mindfulness meditation and the kind of mindfulness meditations that have become really popular throughout the world, they're often rooted in Buddhist meditations. Um, but today we really do think of mindfulness meditation as something that can be a self secular self-care practice because we've seen that it can be so beneficial. Um, and so it's become this thing that we, that we use to emphasize stress reduction, cultivate our focus and develop tranquility. Um, yoga specifically is a very, very old tradition. It began around 300 BCE, um, or 3000 BCE, excuse me, in India. Um, and it was systematized by, by a man named Patanjali in his Yoga Sutras around 300 to 200 BCE. So these are very, very old practices. Um, yoga is something that, that entered the Western world in the 19th century and really took off in the Western world in the 20th century. Um, this kind of started with the translation of basic yoga texts that were written in Sanskrit. And then there was um, an influx um, of Indian yoga teachers and gurus that came to the West 
in the early 20th century, and then it really took off uh, about the mid um, the mid century in the 1950s and 60s. Um, and something that I want to make sure to really um, make make sure that you are aware of is um, we have kind of a limited understanding. Most people have a limited understanding of what yoga is in the West, right? So when we think of yoga, we think of postures. The postures or yoga asana, it's only one of really the eight limbs of a full yoga practice. So um, a full yoga practice, which is called ashtanga, um, there are eight different things that you're really supposed to focus on. Again, yoga being one, I'm not going to take the time to break them all down, but things like breath work, meditation, bliss, these are all um, practices that are meant to be incorporated to really have a complete and full yoga practice, okay? Um, and in addition to that, I also wanted to make sure um, to talk a little bit about why it's so um, important to honor yoga's roots. So um, yoga is a system of living and a system of movement that really can fall, um, fall into this category of cultural appropriation, right? So, um, so taking um, of another culture and not really honoring, um, honoring it fully. So I think it's really important when we're practicing these things to, um, to make sure that we do the research, we understand the roots of it, um, why we're doing it, why it's beneficial to, um, to the lineage that it's from, how we can incorporate it into our own lives, um, and how we can make it accessible to all rather than just some. Because that's another issue in, in the wellness industry is, um, you know, we see individuals on on Instagram doing perfect flexible yoga poses and that's not a reality and um, for most people and it's not what we should um, ascribe to we need to meet our bodies where they are work with, with with the gifts that we're given that's an important thing to keep in mind so um, last but not least um, I wanted to talk a little bit about accessibility um, with all of this so yoga um, the word yoga literally translates to union so this really is a practice that is for everyone it's accessible to everyone um, as we're doing some of these movement practices um, you can make it work for you you can use a chair or a wall if working on the floor is difficult and I'll show some of those modifications as we're moving through some of this um, and then keep in mind, most yoga studios do offer gentle yoga classes or chair yoga classes. It really is important um, for, for all studios um, to make sure that there is um, a way for, for these practices to work for, for all. Um, and if you come across a yoga studio that doesn't have some of these classes, you know, encourage them to, to get some. Um, and then finally, um, there's so many ways to move your body. There's so many ways to practice mindfulness. Sift through it all, find practices that really work for you. Remember, there's really no right way to practice mindfulness. Um, so again, find, find ways that, that it'll work for you. Um, and I encourage you, you know, this is gonna be just a quick introduction to some, some simple practices. But if there are things you wanna learn more about, um, there's so much um, information out there on the internet that you can that you can use to really find some of this stuff. So I encourage you to do that. So I am going to um, stop my screen share now, um, and I am going to lead us through um, some demonstrations. So again, you're more than welcome to participate in some of this. If you don't feel comfortable having your video on while moving through these, you can you can um, turn your screen off. Um, but I'll move us through some of this for about 20 minutes, um, and then we'll have a little bit of a discussion and I can take some questions, okay? So I'm gonna get myself a little bit more set up so that you can see my mat. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of meditation and some breath work. So you can do this by um, sitting on a blanket or a block on a pillow. It's nice to have um, your hips above your knees. That's kind of um, a great goal to have here. Um, it will get you into a nice comfortable position. So I always have yoga blocks around and I also often just have a blanket around that I can utilize too, okay? Um, if you don't want to sit on the floor or if sitting on the floor is not accessible to you, you can sit in a chair and do this exact movement. Um, so you're free to cross your legs. You can rest your hands on your thighs or on your knees. You want to sit up nice and tall so that you're really opening your chest, opening your lungs and feeling expansive. 
You want to lift up through the top of your head, through your crown, so that your energy is flowing upward, okay? So it's nice to close your eyes and just take a few moments to center yourself. You can take some deeper inhales and exhales through the nose. Okay, and I am going to um, lead us through some deeper inhales and exhales. We're gonna inhale for a count of four and exhale for a count of four. Um, I encourage you to really stick with your breath. Um, do your best to just be present. And something that I do when I find myself um, having a wandering mind and thinking about my to-do list or something else that, um, you know, the fact that I'm hungry, whatever, just bring your attention back to your breath. And you can repeat in your head, like I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out to kind of center yourself back in that present moment, okay? So you can go ahead and close your eyes and let's inhale for a count of four. And exhale for a count of four. Inhale again for two, three, four, and exhale for two, three, four. Another inhale, two, three, four. Exhale for two, three, four. Okay, you can blink open your eyes. So I know that was a little rushed. Um, I just wanna make sure that we get through um, all of the different techniques that I'd like to show you. But um, again, this is a really simple way to just bring yourself into a state of mindfulness and meditation um, and to really focus on your breath. It can be tough if you're not used to doing deep breathing to really um, feel like you can fully just slowly inhale for, for, the, for those four breaths, but with practice, um, it does get easier. So I encourage you to keep working on that, okay? Um, I'm gonna move closer to us for this next movement. So I'm gonna show one more pranayama breath that I really like to do. Um, so you can stay seated for this one as well. Um, so we are going to do a practice called uh, alternate nostril breathing or um, nadi shodana, okay? And this is a style of breathing where you're going to close off one of your navel passages and breathe through that and then close off the other. So this is a really interesting practice that can A, make you a little lightheaded if you've never tried it before, um, but it's a really great way to bring clarity into your mind. Um, it creates a balance in your body um, and you get to kind of learn how to regulate um, the, the control of breath or the control of the flow of air through your nasal passages, okay? So this one um, has an interesting little hand movement that you do with it. So you're gonna use your thumb and your ring finger, okay? So these are the two um, fingers that you're gonna use. You're gonna close off your right nostril, okay? You're gonna breathe in through the left, You're gonna take your um, ring finger and you're gonna close off the left nostril, open the right and breathe out the right. You're gonna stay and breathe in on this side. Close off and breathe out the left. Stay and breathe in. Close off and breathe out. You're welcome to um, close your eyes as you do this too. So you can breathe in. Change sides and breathe out. Stay and breathe in. Close off and breathe out. Stay and breathe in. Close off and breathe out. 
and we can release this breath. Um, so yeah, we can talk at the, at the end for a little bit, but um, this is definitely a style of breath that just in a few minutes, you can really feel the effects of it. Like I said, you might feel a little lightheaded, um, but this one is really intense because you are regulating um, the flow of air in such a specific way that you're not used to. Um, this one can definitely be a little bit disorienting, but really, really wonderful and invigorating at the same time, okay? So I'm gonna move back a little bit so you can see my whole body again. Um, and we're gonna do some seated mobility work. So again, if you are on a chair, you're more than welcome to stay on your chair, um, or you can come back towards, towards um, your seated position, okay? And um, again, we're gonna do a little bit of mobility work. So this is moving through our full range of motion in a joint or muscle. And the important thing about doing mobility work um, is making sure to isolate the movement in that one specific area, okay? So we're gonna start with some neck mobility work, all right? So you're gonna sit up nice and tall. You're gonna drop your chin to your chest. You're gonna roll your right ear towards your right shoulder. You're gonna roll your head back. Roll your left ear towards your left shoulder and back down to the ground. And you're gonna keep moving around in this way. You can move nice and slowly so that you really move through that full range of motion. And again, a tip for making sure to isolate here is you really want this movement to only be coming from the neck. So you wanna keep your shoulders as still as possible, your torso as still as possible. The next time your chin is at your chest, you can rotate towards the left. So bring the left ear to the left shoulder, the head back, the right ear to the right shoulder and back down. And keep moving around like this. Okay, can bring that to stillness. Um, we'll do a little bit of shoulder mobility now. So these are just gonna be really simple shoulder rolls. So you'll bring your shoulders forward, up and down your back forward, up, and down your back. And make sure to breathe with this. You're gonna inhale as you come forward and exhale as you bring your shoulders down the back. So inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And let's rotate in the other direction. So you'll bring them back, up, and forward. So inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. All right, so those are two really simple mobility movements. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of mobility work on the wrists next. Um, I love doing wrist mobility work. Um, it's so great for those of us who have our hands like this all day, whether we're typing, whether we're writing, whether we're painting or doing something um, creative. It's really important to open up your palms, um, do some mobility work on the wrist and really focus on hand and wrist health, okay? So um, I'm gonna start back here and I'll come a little bit closer at times just so you can see a little bit better. But we are going to do this movement on our hands and knees in a tabletop position. If this is not accessible to you, you can go against a wall and you can put your hands on the wall and do all the movements from there as well, okay? So um, in a tabletop position, you want your, um, your wrists to be stacked with your shoulders. So there's a straight line here. And then you also want your hips stacked over your knees, right? You're spreading your fingers nice and wide and pushing down through your palms. You wanna have a micro bend in your elbows so that you're not hyper extending, all right? And then you're also really pressing down the tops of your feet into the ground or into the mat, all right? So here, we're gonna do some mobility work. We're gonna lean forward, you're gonna lean off to the right, you're gonna lean back, you're gonna lean to the left, and back forward. So you're circling around your wrists. Um, so the best way to isolate this movement is to keep your arms still and then really focus on grounding down through your palms here. All right, so notice if there's an area of your palms that lift up and then just do your best to make sure that it stays down. And then we're gonna circle in the other direction, so you circle counterclockwise.
All right, we can bring that to stillness. So there's other ways that you can continue to do wrist mobility. Um, you can turn your wrists out towards, um, or your wrists will be pointing in towards one another and your fingertips will be pointing out towards the left and right of your mat. All right, and then you can circle here too. And I'm just gonna do this a couple times just so we can move on to other things and then you would rotate in the other direction. And another way you can do this is you can actually rotate your wrists all the way back. This might not be comfortable for everyone, but you would have your middle fingers pointing towards your toes and you can circle here too as well. If this is, um, if this hurts in any way or if this is not an accessible move to you, you can turn your wrists out a little bit more um, and circle there, okay? Um, so the next move I wanna show, um, these are palm push-ups, okay? So you'll come back towards that tabletop position. All right, and what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna lift up onto the proximal knuckle of your, of your hands. So that is this one right here. So um, where the fingers connect to the palms, that's your proximal knuckle. So you're lifting up onto those and you're keeping your fingers, I'm sorry, your thumbs off the mat and then lowering back down. So you're lifting up and lowering down. If this is tough, you can um, bring your hands closer to your knees and lift here and there'll be less pressure on the hands and wrists. Right, and I'm gonna um, just come a little bit more uh, close so you can kind of see what's happening here, all right? So, so it's like this, thumbs up, okay? This is really great movement for your hand health, all right? Um, couple more things we'll do. Um, so you can sit back on your knees um, or on your, on your heels um, for this movement, and I'm gonna turn towards the camera so that everyone can see me and come up a little closer. Um, so we're gonna do some circles through our wrists. So the, the, the um, goal of this activity is to keep your wrist creases um, touching. So you really want your, your palms to be fully touching the whole time. And you're gonna move your hands in a figure eight position like this. And you could take that in the other direction. So rotate counterclockwise. And again, it's really important to keep the connection between the hands, okay? And then one more mobility work um, piece that I like to do that connects um, the wrists and the shoulders. Um, so I'm gonna come up a little bit higher so you can see, but so you're gonna have your wrist crease touching, all right? And then you're gonna bring your hands through like this, continue to have the wrist crease touch and so you're circling around your wrist creases and you're really using your shoulders to help make this possible. So notice how I'm manipulating my spine at the same time that I'm um, keeping my wrist connected. And then you circle it in the other direction, so circle back towards you. Okay. And you can shake all that off because that wrist stuff can often be a lot if it's new to you. Um, and we're gonna do a couple of standing postures now. I'm gonna keep track of my time here. Um, so one more bit of mobility work that I really love that would be a great thing to do when you're taking your five minute break from, from sitting and working um, is to do the, these hip circles, okay? So you'll have your feet about hips, di hips width distance apart, all right? And you're gonna lean your hips forward off to the right, back, off to the left, and then back forward, all right? And the way that you isolate this movement is by making sure that your hip bones are pointing towards the front of the room at all times. And that will isolate the movement in your hips so that you're not using your torso to make it happen, all right? And let's take that in the other direction. So circle counterclockwise. All right. Um, so we're gonna do a couple of um, yoga asana poses now that can be really helpful. Um, again, when you just kind of need to get up and take a break. Um, so the first one we're going to do is a standing forward fold. So if you um, are sitting at a chair, you can always just do this from a seated position. You don't have to do it from a standard standing position. But so you'll make sure that you have your feet hips width distance apart again. And then you're just going to lay your upper body over your lower body. 
It's important to have a bend in the knees when you do this, because I can show you what it looks like when I don't. So when I don't bend my knees and when I try to straighten my legs, this is what I look like. I'm kind of caving in to my spine and I'm not really um, putting myself in a position that I'm going to see growth in or see more flexibility in. When I bend my knees, I can keep my spine a bit straighter. I can get down a little bit further, okay? You can grab opposite elbows here and you can sway from side to side. This is really nice to release your lower back or if you're someone who um, has bad posture or hunches quite a bit, this is a really nice movement to do to let go of your spine. We have to take care of our backs and our spines. So you can stop swaying if you were doing that. Um, I want to show one more movement that's really good for the hands since we're already in this forward fold. So you can actually take um, your palms and have them facing up towards the ceiling. You can slip them underneath your feet. You can put your toes right in your wrist crease, and this is called a gorilla grip. So you can lean some weight into um, your hands, and you can move your toes from side to side, and you get a really nice massage of your, uh, your palms here. So this can be a really nice restorative movement to do. Um, again, if you've been like type, typing or um, drawing, writing, anything like that, it can be really nice to do, okay? can release that. So now we're going to tuck our tail. We're going to roll all the way up to standing. So you really want to keep your upper body limp, kind of like a rag doll. And you roll up to stand and the last thing that comes up is your head. Okay. So some nice mobility work for the spine is to just do these spinal rolls up and down. So you can drop your chin, put a bend in your knees, shrug your shoulders, and then roll down nice and slowly so that you're feeling every vertebra on your spine as you do it. And you can roll back up. You can take this movement as slow or as fast as you want, but this is another great one to do um, to really get some of the kinks out in your spine. Um, so I want to show just a couple more yoga postures um, that can be really helpful. So if you're feeling um, low energy and you really want um, something that's going to kick you up into high gear or make you feel a little bit more energetic, I like to do warrior poses. So again, when um, these poses are named after um, like tangible things that we can really think about what we're meant to embody or feel like when we're in the posture. So, um, so this is going to be a warrior two position um, or Virabhadrasana two, all right? So you can come to a standing position. We can step our left foot back, all right, into a lunge. You're going to have your left foot um, kind of pointing off towards the side, so it will be at a 90 degree angle. You want a 90 degree angle in your right knee and your front knee. Okay, you're spinning open towards the left side and then you're going to extend your hands like this and you're going to gaze out over your right fingertip. Okay, pull your shoulders down, put your chin up. This is a really nice pose, like I said, to feel like a warrior. If you need some energy, this is a great pose to do. Okay, and if this is hard, you can also shorten your stance and be up a little bit more like this. There's different levels to this pose, make it work for your body. Okay. And we can step back up towards the front of the mat and we can go back with the other foot. So you'll take your right foot back, bend into that left knee, extend your arms out, gaze out over that left fingertip. And don't forget to breathe here. <laughs> All right, we can step back up towards the top of the mat. So um, another couple poses. So we can come back down onto our mat here. Um, and we're going to do what's called a child's pose. So you'll sit back on your heels. You can spread your knees out a little wide, or you can keep them together, kind of whatever works best for your, for your hips. All right, and then you're going to lay your torso over your thighs. You're going to extend your arms out in front. You're going to put your head down on the mat and rest here. And this is a pose that's really nice to do some deep breathing in because you can really 
fill up the backs of the lungs and feel, um, feel your lungs really expanding into your back body. Okay, can roll back up and then I'm going to show one last pose. Um, this is the traditional pose for ending uh, yoga classes, but this is called Shavasana or corpse pose. And it is literally just laying on your back. You let your feet splay out towards the sides. You rest your arms on either side of you with your palms facing up. You close your eyes. You let your breathing return to normal and you just relax and melt into the floor. It's a really, really nice way to um, end uh, any sort of movement work to just give yourself a moment to rest and return to that normal state of energy flow in your body. All right, so um, that again, that's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what you can do with a, a meditation movement practice, um, yoga practice. Um, there's so much more to do and to talk about, but uh, wanted to get us started there. So we've got a little bit of time. Um, if anyone has any specific questions about any of this stuff, I'm more than happy to, um, to answer. Yeah, we're a small group too, so feel free to unmute yourself if you have questions, or I'm also going to drop some resources that Christina shared with me in the chat now. So some health impacts of yoga and pranayama, if you want to continue some of the, the wonderful things Christina just shared with us, and then um, origins of yoga here. Oh, my foot's spazzing a little. <laughs> But yeah, I hope that was um, helpful. I hope you feel a little better after doing some of those movements. Again, simple things. I'm, I'm just a huge proponent of making all of this stuff accessible to everyone, finding things that work for your body, um, making sure to get up <laughs> every hour for five minutes. Um, I, tell, I tell people that all the time. It's such an important thing to do for your health. I'd love to ask you, Christina, just a few, to kind of put it, do a quick plug for, you know, you, yeah. I know you as my colleague at the museum, but, um, and at Papa, but can you talk a little bit about some of the places you're teaching? So if people are interested in continuing this with you, or I know there's so many resources online, but it's great to share what. Yeah. You. Um, so I, um, am going to be teaching at a studio called, um, your movement sanctuary, which is at, um, it's at a, about 27th and, and Gerard in Brewery Town um, when they reopen um, in a couple weeks. So I'll be teaching um, the 6.30 a.m. classes, which I love to teach. I'm a morning person, but I'll be there at 6.30 a.m. on um, Mondays and Wednesdays. I also um, teach kind of privately because of um, the situation we find ourselves in with, with COVID-19. Um, I've been transitioning onto Zoom. So I teach on Zoom a few days a week. Um, and I'm going, so I have, um, I'm more than happy to have people join in if anyone is interested in that. And then I'm also starting to organize some outdoor yoga um, as well on the weekends. So um, these are all things that are, that are kind of shifting and changing just because of the nature of where we are, but my, my schedule will be changing. So if anyone's interested, um, I, I can share my email and um, we can we can chat. And if you'd like to join in on any classes, more than happy to have you. Okay. I'm gonna drop that email in the chat now. Yeah. Everybody. Lovely. Well, yeah, feel free as we, we are winding down, but if anybody has questions or wanted to say hi on your way out, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, thank you, Christina, so much for sharing. Um, so that's very simple, but so helpful techniques, especially as I know we have many creatives and people who sit at our desks all day long. So I know this is, has greatly helped me. Um, so thank you. And thank you all for being here today with us. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I, um, um, 
I'd love to hear if you feel comfortable unmuting yourself, um, you know, what, I know I saw you at our yoga, or at Christina's yoga class this weekend. Yeah, I, I teach at PMA, Philadelphia Musical Bar. So, you know, I'm gonna start moving all our classes virtually. Um, so I feel like one of these acti activities or movements could be used before we start sitting and looking at the screen. Um, so I'm definitely learn something today. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, as I've transitioned all of my teaching online, I've been having students do um, some movement. And I think it's a great thing to, to find ways to incorporate into the classroom, especially with all of the extra Zoom uh, fatigue that we're dealing with. I think it's great to get, to get your audiences up and moving. Yeah, and it's something that you've utilized in our um, Papa's online programming with our students already, which is, I know people have really enjoyed. Okay. It's great okay. in the studio, too, mm -hmm. to use it in the studio after yeah. meeting for hours and hours and hours mm -hmm. to take a break and do that, meditate, too. Thank you, Christina. Yeah, you're very welcome. I'm glad that was my hope. I was hoping that people would make a connection between, um, you know, uh, this this practice and their and how important it is in their studio practice as well to get up and move yeah. around. Peace and quiet. And yeah. Movement. Yeah. Have a good one. Thank you. Have to go preach now. Thanks. Thanks everyone for being here. Feel free to. We will probably do more of this in the future, but so keep a lookout on our website. Um, and we hope to see you again at another Papa Zoom event in the future. So. Thanks care, everybody. everybody. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great weekend.